like many students and basically the majority of architects around the world. For now, my living room is also my workspace and kitchen, TV room, etc. Everything is this one big space. But what better exercise than to model it in 3D and see what you can improve? Or just model it to see from a different perspective where you are living and working. Hi, my name is Steven and I am the creator of Show It Better. In this video, I want to talk to you about modeling and rendering my living room apartment. Okay, so for a while now, I had been wanting to do this exercise and I finally got to doing the first part. This was all done to have a layout where I could work in even if I ever wanted to buy a new sofa or modify my workspace. Then I could create a quick mock-up of how it would look and what specific dimensions I would need. Next, I had never done a 3D model that was really full of small details and elements. So I wanted to invest some time into looking for different 3D models that suited my real life workspace. Here are the timestamps for anyone who is interested in jumping into a specific part. But in short, this was divided into various parts. First, I had to measure in a rough way my living room. For this, I had a tape measure and annotated in a notebook the overall sketches of my space. If you ever have to do this for a specific project, I suggest you spend way more time and be a bit more detailed. Since I was not going to do anything very serious with this plan, then I didn't invest much time in the small detailed measurements. I just measured everything very quickly. Second, I made a very quick model in SketchUp of the living room. Now, this wasn't a very complex space to model, so I did not want to take it in Revit or Archicad because that wasn't really worth it for me. So I just modeled this very quickly in SketchUp using the measurements I had annotated before. This part was overall very easy, but since I knew I wanted a nice final render, well, I tried to model some imperfections like a column, the windows, and my small fridge, which I love. Next, downloading the elements from the 3D warehouse. Now this was probably the most time consuming part of the whole exercise. I knew it would be a waste of time to model everything in my apartment. Knowing the 3D warehouse has a ton of free high quality 3D models to choose from. The only hard thing is finding them. I guess I still think the search engine of the 3D warehouse is not that good. Maybe you should be able to type in keywords and get different kinds of suggestions. Maybe like the Google or Pinterest search engine. But in the 3D warehouse, if something is not specifically named what you typed in, then you won't have a chance finding it. Sometimes the perfect 3D models are in Portuguese and not in English or Spanish. So you have to spend a lot of time looking in the 3D warehouse for good models. What I generally recommend is first filtering your search by popularity or likes. I have found this to be the most effective measure. By default, the search is filtered by relevance and it doesn't have a very good first results in my experience. Another recommendation is to filter the size of the model you are looking for. At first, I was getting carried away and downloading everything in sight, and I wasn't looking that much at the size of each model. So for example, I downloaded some bananas that were around 10 megabytes. That is very heavy if you take into consideration how small they are in the general model. If you are doing a similar exercise and if you are going to create a very detailed 3D renders, then you will need very detailed 3D models. But if your image is just going to turn up into a 72 DPI resolution image, then maybe downloading all these heavy models is not worth it. Anyways, I can say I spent around a good hour and a half downloading 3D models from the 3D warehouse from plans, books, chairs, tables, sofa, fridge, cabinets, tripods, everything. Even some notebooks and pencils I found. All these little details just added a lot of story to my image and made every part much more interesting. I wanted to be able to zoom in and see all the elements that are really in my workspace and 3D space. 
Now, of course, this is not a very faithful process. If I couldn't find the exact chairs or coffee cup I used, then I would just change it. But it didn't change the essence of the image. So as you can see, after importing all the 3D models, the image got instantly a lot of life and it was just very interesting. The next step was rendering it and exporting it to Photoshop. Now, the majority of the model was already textured in a great way, so I just had to adjust some personal details of the apartment, like the floor, the mirror, and some wooden surfaces which were very specific. But overall, this wasn't very complicated. Finally, to set up the final render, I had various tests with light and size. In the end, I rendered a big image with around 4000 by 7000 pixels. This size made my image very zoomable, so if anyone wanted to get up close and look at my desk or my plants, they could do that and it wouldn't get pixeled or noisy. I also tried rendering with my CPU first and then with my GPU. I found out later that my GPU was taking these renders out much quicker, but this is not always the case. If your computer has more, a more potent CPU, then it may be faster there. I don't know which is faster, I already suggest you look up in Google for the V-Ray benchmark and type in the references of your GPU and CPU. It will tell you which one does the work much faster. After rendering the whole image, I entered it into Photoshop. Now honestly, there wasn't much work to be done, just some small corrections. I could have maybe spent more time here, but I realized I liked to render as is and it didn't need much adjustments. The first adjustment was the overall color. So I added a color lookup that I've been downloaded for free and it just grouped all the colors into a much warmer image. Next, I added a textured background of a knife of a rice paper and I darkened it so it could be a contrast with the overall apartment render. I also lowered the brightness of some exterior walls, added a black outline to the top of the wall sections, and corrected some imperfections of the 3D model. It was definitely a very interesting experience, which I'm going to use and maybe also create some interesting perspectives of my room. But overall, I like the result. It clearly has a very commercial feeling to it, but also I could only leave the textures and turn it into a more collage style image, which can also work, but it only depends on how, how you are going to present it. Now, if you are interested in looking deeper into my 3D model in SketchUp and Photoshop files of the final rendering, I suggest you go over to my Patreon page. There you can have access to the real-time video of the process plus the SketchUp file and PSD file, as well as the previous project files of all the past videos. Have you ever modeled your workspace? I challenge you to model it. Render it in a similar way and send me an image. Let's all model our workspace in these quarantine times. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.